Hello everyone and welcome to a new series in Kerbal Space Program. I've yet to come up with a name for it, but the end goal of this series is to have a permanent mining base on Drez. So, just a disclaimer, this is not a fresh save. I have played through enough to get a few tech nodes and upgrade a few facilities, but that's just because the first few missions in career mode are just pretty much all the same and just a grind so we're back into the well up to the uh, bit more interesting missions I've got a few contracts mostly tourists and so I think we should just launch a set of tourists now First of all, I need to check who's going where. Orbit, orbit, orbit. Okay, that makes it easy. They're all going to orbit. So, I use my uh, rocket tourist trap orbit. Yes, because that's names. So, we'll take uh, Berberdus Kerman. <laughs> Randomly generated names in this are so funny. Okay. Loading, loading, loading. Loading times have been much, much shorter in this new update than in previous updates. So, let's go! Flame trenches and camera shake. Just add to the atmosphere of this game. Now you might notice I'm flying with the new female pilot, Val, instead of Jeb. That's because Jeb found out the hard way that due to the new aerodynamics model, the standard capsule is no longer aerodynamically stable in a retrograde re-entry. So, what that means is, it wants to go nose first, not heat shield first. So yeah, in this save, Jebediah sort of blew up. Which is why I've put these fins on the top of the rocket here. All in an effort to sort of try and limit the number of Kerbals I lose due to the capsule flipping during re-entry. It would be easier if we had a spherical capsule like what the um, Vostok spacecraft had, but that design comes with its own problems, mostly due to uncontrollability. As for the rocket, pretty standard liquid fuel boosters that I've just jettisoned. And also, because I can, I've got offset controls and I've stuck the uh, tourist capsule up into the pilot capsule. Now, what's my apparatus now? Okay, 67, we're getting there. I do have Kerbal Engineer installed, but I'm not going to be using it. At least, not until I've upgraded the tracking station to show patch conics, as in time to apparatus and things like that, able to use maneuver nodes. Cut throttle there. Reason being, if the tracking station doesn't have the capability to show such things, then really the rocket shouldn't have those capabilities either. So 
So, until I upgrade the tracking station, there will be no Kerbal Engineer. Parts. It'll still show me my Delta V readouts in the VAB without having the parts, but I can accept that because that's something that is able to be calculated even without you know, upgrading the tracking station because it's just numbers. And this rocket is very conservative. It could probably go to the moon if I so tried. And orbit. It's, it could most definitely go to the moon. But I'll save that for another time when I can be even more conservative because running out of fuel while in orbit around the moon is not a good idea. Around Minmus, it's not so bad because you can get out and push your way back to Kerbin. But the moon is a bit more challenging. So. Oh, also. Um, there's a bit of an issue with the um, female models in that um, sometimes the game gets confused about which model should be showing. For example, this is the dude, this is the tourist, and he should be a dude. And I have seen, at least once, Val appear as a guy. So, oh, let's slow down over the KSC. Just say, uh, you know what, let's see what he sees. Interesting that, uh, he has controls. So, let's see. I love how you can see the KSC from orbit. Oop, and that's Val's point of view. I love the space tourism contracts that they've given us. Because that's really one of the uh, big goals of people like um, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX is to be able to open up space travel to the average person. And being able to do something like that in KSP and get paid for it, what else could you want? Let's see if we can get close to the KSC. I've done it before completely by accident. So let's see. Three, two, one. Cut throttles. We might make it back on. Eh. Without the trajectories mod, I honestly can't tell. And that's another mod that I will be getting once it updates, which will probably be not for a while yet. So let's switch to free mode. A bit of a camera freak out. Now I do not have a heat shield on this spacecraft, but it is able to re-enter just fine using the engine which is not very realistic by any stretch of the imagination but hey it saves me money for paying for a decoupler and a heat shield as well as losing whatever fuel and tankage is in this upper stage and that's something that uh, Deadly reentry sort of suffered from a little bit was that being able to use engines as heat shields. Nice little sunrise there as we pass over the crater. Our two Kerbals look pretty happy. And 
I'm not sure if it's actually possible, but I'm keeping my pointing vector above my retrograde vector to try and sort of fly this thing down through re-entry. Which is something that you can do with FAR and in real life. Capsule re-entries quite often have an offset center of mass so that the capsule doesn't uh, position itself directly along its retrograde vector which basically allows some form of control with the re-entry by rolling the spacecraft you're able to change its angle of attack to the airstream and raise or lower your vertical speed or indeed if you roll sideways to possibly change your impact point. Everything from Gemini to the modern Soyuz capsules can do that. The Voskhod and Vostok capsules also had an offset center of mass but that was just to maintain orientation being spherical changing their orientation really didn't give them any sort of control but as I said I'm not sure if that's something that you can actually do in stock KSP now and big flames Another thing they've done in the new update, they being squad, is that the reentry effects are now, they persist below 10 kilometers, whereas before they would switch to just mark effects. So that makes me think that the effects are more based on your speed rather than your altitude. And speaking of our speed, we are still above 2 kilometers per second at 20 kilometers. So, yes, the atmosphere is definitely thinner. Get a bit of camera shake, probably about 0.5 Gs. And we will still be going at about Mach 1.5 at about one kilometer with this new atmospheric model, which sort of makes landing a bit of a uh, arduous process. A bit more stressful than it used to be, which I am all for. Yes, as you can see with these little control surfaces back here, we are stable in this orientation. If I didn't have those fins, we would not be. And this pretty much results from the fact that the center of mass for the capsules is at its geometric center. So it's at 50% of its height and 50% of its diameter. Okay, and parachute. Okay, I was wrong, we were still above Mach 2. And after a 15G deceleration, we have kind of be a deployment. So, as I was saying, the center of mass for these capsules is basically here. So, 50% up, 50% in when in reality, just by fact that it's a truncated cone, it should be towards the base. And all this conspires to make it completely aerodynamically unstable. Let burn a bit to slow down. Burn a lot to slow down. And I've lost everything. Anyway. Great. So, let's recover.
Squad is still working on the game, there will be more updates, and that's something I hope they fix, is the stability of the capsules. I have tested it, the uh, Mark II capsule is the same. So, we got a bit of science, a bit of money, let's see if there's anything else. How's it going, Gene? Test, Rocket Max, Brandy Coppola in flight. 200 minutes per second at 23 kilometers. 30,000 funds. Yeah. Ferry 4 tourists safely to the destination and back. Okay, they want flybys around the moon. I'm not up to that yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. This, uh... <laughs> Jedri. Bit of a uh, Jebediah impersonator here. He just wants an orbital flight, so... We'll add that to the list. I've got a lot of... Tourists to go through. And all of them are... Orbital, so... We'll do the rest of those later. But... I do have a uh, temperature scans mission here, and it just so happens I have a plane for that. No, Bill, you will not be flying this. This will be flown by Val. <laughs> and camera flip. Nope, oh, brakes. Now before we launch, this landing gear. It is hilarious. So we'll go here. And I keep singing praises for this new update, but I have to keep doing it because it's just that awesome. They have changed the chase cam. So Let's fire up the engine. And yes, this plane is very minimal. Just to keep it dirt cheap. Breaks off. And we're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I don't know the rest of the words of that song. For those of you who don't know, that song is called Rawhide. From... I don't know if it's the 70s or 80s or what. But I used to listen to it all the time when I was a kid. So, yeah. Now, previously, this amount of liquid fuel would last a jet like this all the way to the western deserts. This load of fuel will barely allow me to get to here, land, and then get back. So, yeah. One will have to be a bit more conservative and, uh, yeah, a bit more conservative with their jet designs from now on. But, with the new lift and drag models, I no longer have to run it at continuously full throttle. So... This flight will probably get pretty boring pretty quickly, so... I'll get back to you when we have uh, reached our destination. And we're back. Oh boy. Landing here is going to be hard. By the looks of it, the location is right about here. In this little valley. Uh, any signs up here? 
Nope. Oh boy. This plane can fly pretty slow, but can it fly that slow? I've also got no ejection system of any sort. So Yeah, Val. You are going to have to make sure you get this landing first try. And at least stay alive. And keep your thermometers intact because that's the whole point of us coming out here. So, by the looks of this, I can make a low altitude run up here. Constantly getting slower and aim to put down right about here. Yes, I can. Awesome. Let's put up the brake torque of the main gear so that we can slow down once we're on the ground. Oh boy. I say that a lot, but that's just because things are stressful. times like this where I'm glad I can fly with a joystick because trying to fly this sort of approach with mouse and keyboard I feel for I feel for anyone who has to try and do this although most sane people would probably just use a rocket wouldn't they Yeah, most people would probably use a rocket. Hang on a second. Where are we actually going? Yep, it's right over there. Let's see, what does the map say? Ooh. It's up on that ridge, isn't it? Oh boy. There we go again. This plane is very light and has a lot of wing surface, so it does glide fairly well. <sighs> Problem is, I've not yet landed it at all on this sort of terrain. You know what, let's make one more flyover. Let's see if we can find exactly where this thing is. Let's point it right at it and let's see where it flips onto the other side of the nav pole. Okay, good. We can land that. We can land that. Okay. Make a hard turn to slow down. Roll flat. Check descent rate. Flare and brakes, 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 brakes. Oh, jeez. Okay, we're good. We are good. Camera, please stop shaking. All right, we'll switch to free mode now, so that it doesn't keep shaking so much. That was the wrong button. I need brakes. 
Oh boy, turning around and, s and taking off again in this place is going to be fun. My point nine or point ninety series, well not really series, but playthrough. I was able to do this sort of thing quite easily, but I had a landing game mod that allowed me to basically get a lot more ground clearance. than this and I'm always worried about smacking my engine right. full thrust SAS let's get out of here now nose down for now so I don't smack off my engine and then no okay Oh boy. I've got to stop saying that. I designed this thing to be a bush plane. I think I succeeded. Really, I say it's a bush plane because mostly of that landing gear. Okay, let's slow down a bit. Not use quite so much fuel. I haven't used nearly as much as I thought I would. But... Those... I don't know if you guys can hear that, but... Every so often there's some... arbitrary distant explosion. I don't know why. Let's see, can we get a temperature report? No. This is definitely mostly thanks and thanks mostly to these new landing gears. This is the uh, most rugged stock plane I've ever built, especially in career mode. It's small, it's light, and it's got a very short takeoff run. I haven't been paying all that much attention, but if these main gears actually flex and bounce as you go over uneven terrain, that would just be an attention to detail unprecedented. Because in real life, a plane with sort of landing gear like a um, like a trike or a gyrocopter or something, if they land hard, their main gear bends a lot. Which is really what this landing is based off, is a, is an ultralight or a microlight. Which being... 4.67 tons, it's... pretty much right in the ballpark of, actually. It's a bit too heavy to be a a marker light. This would be classified by the FAA as a um, light aircraft, something along the lines of a Cessna. But that's enough rambling about planes. We'll pick this up again for the landing. And once again, we are back just above the KSC. Well, not just above, but above the KSC. So, the only problem with my flight stick is that the roll axis is very sensitive. Uh, chase. Wah! <laughs> oh man, the new camera is so buggy. It's hilarious. 
So there's the GSE way down there. Let's just make a crash dive. In games like War Thunder, crash diving is not really recommended because you will crash. But in KSP, you can usually pull out of them fairly well. So this is sort of akin to joining the pattern on around a real airport. So this would be the uh, downwind leg. Except you wouldn't join the pattern at a real airport by doing a crash dive. You would come in usually perpendicular to the runway or perpendicular to the pattern at about 1,500 feet and join downwind like that. And then fly the pattern as normal. But I was a bit too high. So, turn you off the base onto final. And I'm still a bit high. But we should be able to bleed off our speed. And because the runway is so bumpy, I'll sit down on the grass next to it. And we'll start rounding out. Leading off our speed as we go. The low level KSC just looks so quaint. And down. Brakes. Bumpity, bumpity, bumpity. Whole lot less bumpy than it would be on the runway. And there we have it, another successful mission. So, off camera I'll sort out the rest of those, I think there's about seven more tourist missions, and I'll finish the last point on this temperature scans mission, and should be able to pick up the next episode with a... Uh, Muna flyby. So, see y'all then.